Welcome to my transparent watercolor tutorial, Snowy Winter Scene. This is the narrated step-by-step -step version of this painting set at normal speed. This is the companion video to my transparent watercolor demonstration, which is set to music at 3x speed so you can watch the complete uninterrupted evolution. On the right side of the screen was my reference and inspiration for this painting, Snowy Winter Scene. As you can see, my painting is not an attempt to render the photograph and reproduce the photograph. I use it as inspiration, but I try and interpret the scene in a painterly manner. This is a snowy scene, and I want to maintain my transparency of watercolor, so I've made the decision that I'm going to use masking fluid before I begin any painting. So I, I use this squeeze bottle, which I, I purchased an empty squeeze bottle and I fill it myself. It's a more economical uh, way of doing this because it can get quite expensive to use a lot of masking fluid in some of the pre-configured packaging. And what I'm doing right here is I'm putting masking fluid to uh, indicate where the snow would be resting on uh, the edges of some of these trees. This is going to be a very wintry scene, and I want to have a lot of white snow showing through, so I'm using this um, applicator to, to put it where I want on some of these trees and on some of the rock surfaces. There will be a couple different techniques I'll use to apply the masking fluid in this painting. I've done quite a few of the trees, and now I'm going to... Uh, indicate where some of the snow would be resting on top of the rocks so it would be some of the pure white coming through there and as I've done some of the trees I have most of them are vertical uh, linear shapes that are going to be revealed but some of them are more horizontal where the trees have leaned over and the snow would be resting on top and I'm using this it's called a color shaper I believe it's actually a clay tool but it's a good way once you apply a bead of masking fluid you can take this rubber tip color shaper and move the uh, masking fluid around and cover larger areas so it's again it's an efficient method of getting the most out of your masking fluid on a snowy winter day there's going to be snow flying so to create that effect and give that texture I'm taking a toothbrush and I'm dipping it in a jar of masking fluid and I'm just going to splatter it uh, throughout the composition uh, because it's going to be snowing everywhere. So I'll just take my finger and flick it and then I'll take uh, the toothbrush and hit it against my hand and um, I want to get quite a bit of this spread across the paper because it's going to give that snowy effect when, when I get close to the end and I lift off the masking fluid. It's going to give the the impression that there's snow and I don't use white paint to do that I plan ahead and I apply this masking fluid and then when I re remove it the pure white white of the paper comes through with this very nice snowy texture now that I've applied the masking fluid where I want it and I've let it thoroughly dry I'm ready to begin painting I'm working with a one inch flat brush and I'm using a mixture of burnt sienna and ultramarine blue. Those two mixed in uh, various proportions are going to give a cool blue color, uh, a neutral gray, or a warmer sienna tone. So I'm going to use those uh, varying mixtures of those two paints throughout this whole painting. And you can see that um, I'm being very loose and generous with the application of this paint and this is just the background and I have this masking fluid applied throughout there so towards the end of this painting as I lift uh, the masking fluid off some of those shapes and textures are going to be revealed in this uh, this wash that I've applied to start and, and it's in the background and you can see that I have both warm and cool tones going but it's all a mixture of ultramarine blue and burnt sienna I still like to get a little bit of a cooler tone in there so I'm going to take a mixture that's 
uh, leaning more towards the ultramarine side and work it into this wash which is still very wet so it gradates in there nicely and that combination of warm and cool gives a suggestion that there's some foliage and snow in the distance but it's not defined it's just suggesting that that's what's back there because of the, the coolness the cool color that would be on the snow and then the uh, branches and, and limited amount of foliage that would be left and here I've switched over to a uh, nice wash brush it's a round brush and I'm painting with more of an ultramar uh, ultramarine blue mixture as I apply these brush strokes I'm trying to contour the land so you, it's not just flat and it's not pointed it, it has rolls to it and goes up and down and when shadows lay on on the snow like this they don't just lay in straight lines they follow the contour of the ground so I'm trying to make suggestive brush strokes that give the indication that this is a rolling uh, terrain so, so I'm, I'm just applying a brush stroke and I leave it alone I'm not rendering these shadows or these rolling hillsides I'm trying to make a statement with my brush and then I just leave it and um, you can see that I try to break up linear shapes I don't just paint paint lines from point A to point B normally without breaking it up somewhere along the way for interest here I'm using a half inch flat brush to uh, create linear, linear shapes that in, give the indication of trees and I'm putting these uh, this darker value alongside of where I've already masked so I'll have this nice contrast of white snow against the dark uh, bark of the tree and I'm not just painting straight lines I'm breaking the lines up and I'm just kind of dragging the side of my brush along and some of these spaces it gives a nice natural uh, contour to the tree I'm going to work this same value down into the rocks where you have some of the the dark tone of the rocks going to be peeking through the snow that's laying on top so it's the same value the same colors and to this point still my my two colors that I've used is uh, ultramarine blue and burnt sienna as I said at the beginning of this I'm not trying to render my photograph I'm trying to interpret what's there and give a painterly uh, interpretation of it so as I paint these rocks I'm not rendering the, the photo I'm just making suggestive brush strokes that give the indication that there's rocks there and um, I just make my brush mark and try to be expressive with it and then I just leave it alone and I'm using the the side of my brush, the corner of my brush, the end of my brush, whatever I need to make this shape. So all these dark values have been put in here with a half inch flat brush. And often I think people think all you can do is a half inch with a half inch flat brush is paint a half inch line. Well, it's not. You can you can make it a narrow line, you can make it a dot or a dash or a triangle. You, you just have to get the most out of your brush. I'm taking a liner brush here and um, just putting in more tree shapes and you can see I break these linear shapes up as I mentioned earlier I don't just make straight lines from top to bottom I start and stop them on the edges of tree trees and I some go to the top some only go part way up some start at the top you want that variation you don't want them all to look alike you don't want them all to be the same angle and you want to try and create overlap where you can I want to give the indication of some of these large branches reaching out horizontally and it creates a nice overlap going over and, un and underneath some of the other tree shapes and helps create depth in the painting.
here I'm making this long branch shape and I'm just um, taking my brush and making one continuous brush stroke and I think there's a tendency to want to take a small brush and render this little branch and spend five minutes on the branch it, it to me I just take a, a couple brush strokes and then I move on and it's only and it's done in a few seconds and it's just it's given the suggestion of this branch reaching out reaching over and behind some of these other trees now I want to give the suggestion of this water flowing up this creek and this is a, a wintry scene and there's snow all around but there's still a flow to this creek and I'm using a a dark tone of ultramarine blue and burnt sienna still and I've worked in just a touch of royal blue which which helps deepen the value on it I'm still being very loose and suggestive with my brush strokes I'm not trying to re render every ripple of water and and get every little rock but I'm trying to create this gradated effect but has to have a, have this current and there's gonna there's texture in the water and when I lift off the masking fluid there's gonna still be the effect of snow coming over top of this uh, in the foreground but it's a pretty neutral tone right now and it's still this like I said it's this ultramarine burnt sienna with a little royal blue uh, mixed in and I'm still working some some uh, mixtures with a little warmer and and while some are uh, some mixtures I'm using are a little cooler so I have this warm and cool working throughout the painting I'm gonna stop for a moment and I'm gonna really check and see where my values are how dark have I gone on the value scale for the most part I'm pretty much middle to light value and I have some that I'm pushing uh, up the value scale but I still don't have too many really dark darks I'm still about a seven on the value scale the, there's some recent brush strokes I put in they're starting to starting to reach towards the end of the value scale but I want to bring more of those darker values in here to give some more pop to this composition and I'm not doing that because I'm looking at my photo and say oh it's darker I'm doing it because I feel design and composition wise it's needed so I'm going to take this darker value and I'm going to start to work it throughout my composition I'm going to move my brush around and I'm just putting in dark brush strokes shapes um, to help give dimension and shape to this composition this uh, mixture has a little bit more royal blue in it to give it a deeper value and I'm just touching my brush on the rocks on the trees and uh, just giving it a little bit more depth and more contrast and when I take off my masking fluid in some of these areas where the pure white paper is going to show through it's going to be right beside some of these dark shapes and it's really going to uh, help that white stand out I'm taking a uh, neutral wash medium value medium dark value and I'm giving the indication of some trees here work by working in negative space uh, so far pretty much uh, most of the work I've done with trees has been working on a positive shape of a tree and here I've given the indication in the background there of some trees but I haven't really painted the tree I've painted the area around the tree so that's working in negative space to give the suggestion of some trees standing there I'm taking uh, a mid value here and uh, I'm going to mix a little more blue in it to make it cooler but I just want to give a little uh, more uh, 
depth, a little deeper value to these shadows. So I've got this mixture, it's got a bit more ultramarine blue in it and gives this cool shadows. And I'm going to give uh, the suggestion that there's some shadows coming from some trees. And when shadows lay on the ground, they don't lay flat, they follow the contour of the land. So I kind of bend these lines a little bit and to suggest that there's a roll of the land going on there. I have a, a smaller uh, liner brush here, a rigger brush, where I'm giving the indication of some more uh, smaller trees here along the edge of the snow line. It just helps give a little bit more interest to that area. I'm continuing to make some of these linear marks to give the suggestion of this kind of thicket like uh, area of bushes and trees and just make that area, that middle ground of the composition um, have a little more substance to it. So I'm using the, the liner brush and for this painting I've only used the three colors, the ultramarine blue, the burnt sienna, and a little bit of royal blue where I wanted some very dark values and that's all I've used for this composition. Here I have a, almost a neutral mixture still leaning towards cool just to give a few touches of darker value. So I've reached a point where I'm ready to re remove my masking fluid so I have this pickup eraser and I'm just going to rub it across the paper and pick up all the masking fluid that I applied at the beginning and you can see as I do this the the white snowy texture that starts to show and the snow that's laying on the trees and some of those whites are positioned right next to some very dark values that I I put in along the uh, length of the tree but I just rub my hand over the surface as I remove this just to make sure that I have it all and again, you have to make sure when you're working with the masking fluid, once you apply it, let it completely dry. And uh, you never try to remove it when it's wet because it'll, it'll make a mess of your paper if you don't do that. So a lot of times after I remove uh, masking fluid, I still have a lot of painting to do. But in these snowy scenes, I, I pretty much wait to the end because I don't want to lose the texture of the snow that I've I have uh, achieved by masking at the beginning of the painting. So that's my painting, Snowy Winter Scene. As always, I hope you enjoyed this and I appreciate you watching.